give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise. He has been too good for you to set down on him now. Somebody give God praise today. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I know it's cold outside, but you have pressed your way this morning. I know it's cold outside, but I got a praise on the inside. I got a fire built up on the inside that this world cannot contain. Hallelujah. We have assembled to give the Almighty God praise this morning. For he is worthy of that praise. He is worthy of that praise. Him and he alone is worthy of that praise. Hallelujah. So let us go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Hallelujah, Father. We come here just to simply say thank you. Thank you for being God and God alone. Thank you for being who you are, Father. For we didn't have to be here this morning, but you saw fit in your will for us to assemble here today, Father. So we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, today we ask that you accept the fruit of our lips, Lord. Accept, accept our praise as we lift our hands and our hearts unto you. Father, because you are worthy. Father, because you are worthy, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the man of this house this morning. Lord, we ask that you keep, keep and calm him during this time of, of stress and struggle and tribulation this morning, Father. Surround him and overwhelm him, Lord, with a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. And camp angels around him, and not only him, but his family on this morning, Father. Father, allow him to grieve, but not grieve like those who have no hope, Father. For we know, we know that there is better after this, Father. Hallelujah. Allow him to be a voice of inspiration unto the people that he encounters while he's away, Father. Lord, we, again, Lord, we just ask to overwhelm him and his family with peace. And calm the storm that may be brewing in their minds right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we ask that you keep angels encamped around him and his family as they travel to and fro, Lord. Lord, we, we stand up against it. We bind the attacks of the enemy, Father. We, we stand up against it. We bind every mechanical failure, human failure that may interfere with him going and coming, Father, on today, Lord. On today, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, keep our man of God, Father. Keep our man and our woman of God as they are away, Father and bring them back if it be in your will bring them back safely father hallelujah now lord we lift this service unto you father every word spoken every note hit or played on today every movement by the people in your house today lord lord we offer it up to you father lord we cast down self this morning we cast down pride and ego father we cast down anything that wants it to be about us father for we know that this is the god where it's not about us, Father, but it is all about you. It is all about you, Father. Because you and you alone deserve all the praise, the honor, and the glory on today. Father, we love you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. So, Lord, please accept today this worship experience. Please, please accept this worship experience today. Hallelujah, because we just want to serve and praise you, Father. Hallelujah, that is our heart's desire. So, Lord, we invite you into this place. We invite you into this sanctuary. We invite you into our hearts, into our minds, Father. Take over our flesh on today, Father. We're asking for a supernatural move in the house of God today. Lord, people will walk in and walk out chains, Father. Lord, elevate your voices in us, Father, so that around this place, this city, state, this nation, this country, this world, Father. Hallelujah. Elevate your voice within us, Father. Hallelujah. So that when people see us, they see you, not us, Father. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father. And we would be ever so very grateful and careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we ask that all that can stand, please stand as we recite our hedge of protection, Psalm 91, this morning. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilent that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise this morning for he is worthy. He is worthy of the praise. Amen. I said this is a celebration this morning. Every time we assemble, we come to celebrate the king. We come to celebrate the king and the dance in his glory. Hallelujah.
of you know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So I ask, do we have more than two or three gathered in this place? Do we have more than two or three believers gathered together expecting God to change, move? We're going to worship him this morning. We are free to worship because he has made us free. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Yeah. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Come on and say. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord. Mine. 
worship, Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Yeah. Come on and give God some praise if you're free. I said, give God some praise if you're free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many free worshipers do we have in the house this morning? There's a line in that song that I love. It says, I thank God I'm free. I thank God I'm free and I'll never be bound again. And to me, that line is about acknowledging the fact that at one point you were bound. At one point, at one point I was bound. Maybe not physically, but bound by sin, bound by lust, bound by my flesh. But I thank God I am free. And because I am free, I'm free to dance and sing, free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. Hallelujah. Do we have free worshipers in the house today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we'd like to uh, acknowledge our, uh, our visitors that are here for today. So if you're here for the first time, will you please raise your hand this morning? I don't think I see anyone. Any second or third time visitors this morning. Hallelujah. God, be give hand praise for our visitors this morning. We thank you for coming back to Agape Christian Fellowship's ministries. We, we pray that on today you as we pray, Lord, that on today that you have an encounter with God in a way that changes your life forever. Hallelujah. And also, Agape, can we give a hand praise to our online guests that are viewing with us today? We thank you, too, for coming into the living room of God this morning. We pray and wait for the day that you can join us in the sanctuary here in person. Hallelujah. And lastly, but certainly not least, we want to give Agape a hand. Thank you for coming today. I know it's cold outside, and, but you've pressed your way today. And because you have, God sees your, your sacrifice. God sees you, and he will bless you mightily. Amen. Hallelujah. So at this time, we please uh, acknowledge the announcements. Amen. Welcome to Agape Christian Fellowship Ministries, where Jesus Christ is the center and the circumference, the base and the boundary, the balance and the beauty, the sum and the substance of our faith, where it is truly all about him, Jesus. We're glad you're here. Please govern yourself for the announcements. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for a powerful worship experience. Join us every Tuesday at 12 p.m. for noonday prayer and intercession. Worship with us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for midweek empowerment. Praise God, Agape family. Our nursery ministry is open every Sunday and ages range from infant to five years old. Children's Church is open every Sunday and is divided into two categories, Junior Warriors and the Tribe of Judah. Junior Warriors are ranged from grades 1st to 7th and is held every 1st and 3rd Sunday. Tribe of Judah ranges from grades 8th to 12th and is held every 2nd and 4th Sunday. Sonship School of the Firstborn, Class of 2025, begins Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. Registration is now open. If you are interested in enrolling, please see Sonship Executive Administrator Stacy Jackson immediately following service. January 4th through the 25th is our annual 21 Days Corporate Fast and Prayer. This year's fast focus is establishing kingdom precedence. We do not fast to move God, but we fast to move us into a position to receive what God has already purposed and planned for our lives. For more information about our prayer times and fast requirements, please see the instructional guide located at the greeter's desk. Our first Men's and Women's Fellowship of 2024 is Saturday, February 3rd at 10 a.m. Join us for a time of learning and sharing with one another. We will also have a hot breakfast. If you would like to bring a covered dish or assist with hospitality, please see Minister Charnell Jackson. Sunday, February 4th marks 90 days for supersede testimonies. Come prepared to share what the Lord has done in your life when you gave on November 5th during our supersede Sunday. Leaders, Auxiliary Leaders Meeting is Saturday, February 10th at 10 a.m., followed by a Minister's Meeting at 11 a.m. 
Agape family, who's your favorite football team? Super Bowl Sunday, February 11th, is Jersey Sunday. So come and represent your favorite team. Wednesday, February 14th, is Valentine's Day. Midweek empowerment is canceled to allow you to celebrate Valentine's Day with your loved ones. Join us February 18th for Black History Sunday in support of Black History Month. In support of Black History Sunday, members are encouraged to wear African attire. If you would like to purchase a copy of today's message via CD or MP3, please visit our media department. For more information, please visit our website at www.agapecfm.org. Follow us on Facebook or subscribe to our channel. And again, thank you for worshiping with us. Amen, amen. What time is it, Agape? Yes. I'm just going to encourage you very quickly. Like Minister Sherelle said, we've taken all the scriptures and we've shown you every point of view, but I'm going to give you one more. So Malachi 3, and we're going to start in 7. It says, or sorry, we're going to start in 8. It says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. And this is how do we rob you? By not paying, by not making the payments of the tenth and the contributions. You are suffering under a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full tenth into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. Trust me in this way, says the Lord of armies. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven, and pour out a blessing for you without measure. Matthew 6, and we're going to start in verse 25. It says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown in the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? You of little faith. When I got the assignment to bring forth encouragement for tithe and offering, I felt like Minister Sherelle said, Lord, we've, we've given them everything. We've told, it's a command. You've said to bring forth. It's not an option. They don't get to pick and choose. It's a command. And then the Lord said, but some are worried. They're worried about what they're going to eat. They're worried about their bills. When the income comes in, the first thing they think of is, well, let's go ahead and knock these bills out. And that's not the right mindset to have. The Lord lets us know that if we give him the first tenth, then everything after is going to be taken care of. So I ask you today, why worry? Are we all ready to give? Amen. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Do we already have tithes and offering envelopes? Amen. We're going to put our envelope in our right hand. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom. God, we ask, God, that every family that has sown, God, is blessed 30, 60, and 100 fold. God, we ask, God, that the community is blessed just because we are blessing your kingdom. God, and we ask, God, that we not just become, God, a pillar of, the king, of this community, God, but a lighthouse, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.
You guys are going to go down after declaration. After declaration. Amen. If we could all stand, we're going to say our declaration. Amen. People are standing in line to worship with us. Every seat is filled in every service with expectations of miracles, signs, and wonders. Our Sunday morning service at 10 a.m., our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m., and any other services we might have. We are 100% tithe and offering givers, and every need in this ministry is met. All of our property is paid off in full, and we owe nothing to any man but to love one another. Every member of this church is prosperous, healthy, blessed, and spirit-filled. The devourer is rebuked for our sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of our ground. Every community, city, state, and nation call us blessed. We are reaching the world with the gospel through our prayers and support. We believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. We can do what it says that we can do. We can have what it says that we can have. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For this is a prosperous year for us. The door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The door of failure has been closed, and we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us. The door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The door of failure has been closed, and we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us. The door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The door of failure has been closed, and we shall not know defeat. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. And the next voice you will hear is our man of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, Agape. Give God praise for his goodness, for his glory, even for his grace upon our lives today. And again, we thank God for all of our guests that are in the house, our guests that are viewing by way of social media. Welcome to the living room of God. And this morning, I want to complete part two of our mantra for this year. The message I preached on last Sunday was one house. And so this morning, I want to preach part two of one house. And that is coming from Philippians chapter number 2, verses 1 and 2 in the CEV. And it reads, Christ encourages you, and his love comforts you. God's spirit unites you, and you are concerned for others. Now make me completely happy. Live in harmony by showing love for each other. Be united in what you think, as if you were only one person. You ought to shout with me, one house, one person, one house. And this morning, I'm going to be ministering from a sub-theme of household composition. Since we're one house, what is the household composition for this church and the body of Christ at large to become one house? And on last Sunday, we shared with you the Lord's Prayer and how Jesus prayed unto the Father. Father, let them become one as I am one with you. Let them be one with us. And so that was the Lord's Prayer, even in the beginning, that we be of one mind and one heart as, as we serve the Lord, as we magnify God. It was about us coming together for one person and that's not only to make Jesus king but for us to become one with those we worship with those who have like precious faith who we serve with in ministry within the church of God that we be one just like there is one body though many members there is one body of Christ and each and every one of us is a member of Christ's body so this morning part two of one house is household composition say that household composition say it again household composition and so that's what we're going to be ministering from this morning and so and I pray that all of you are ready for the word of God because 
quite frankly, the word of God is ready for you. And I do admonish every member of this church to get a CD or an MP3 of this morning's message because it's imperative, it's essential and necessary that we rehearse this word in our ears. Even as you are going out the remainder of this 21-day fast, every principle, every precept, every proposition that I minister on this morning, I want you to rehearse it in your hearing and make it a part of your confession. Even as you're going out the day, just let the Lord know that, that that's my goal, that's my aim, to be one house, one with you, one with those I worship with, and even one with those who I'm praying for and believing for, for salvation. Give God praise, Agape. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God a real praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so it is. I've said many times, and, and, and I'll say it again. We don't need any more Jesus. Those that are believers, those that are born again, those that are saved, we don't need any more Jesus. We just need to know more about the Jesus that we already have. And that's the reality of it all. So as I minister some of this uh, this morning, for most of you, it's brand new. But for others, it might be a review. It doesn't mean that if it's a review, it's not as important. So some of these principles, some of these propositions, some of these precepts I've preached before, but even tonight, uh, this morning now, glory to God, I said tonight, but this morning, uh, we're going to be ministering concerning the composition of the house. Say it again, the composition of the house. Hallelujah. And so it stands true in regard to what I'm preaching today that we need to rehearse the word of God in our ears. Either way, this manna that I'm ministering this morning is from heaven and God wants to be happy. He wants us to make him happy so that he can be glorified. Say one house. And so when we think about household composition, household composition, the reason you are a, a, a member of the household is because you are a member of the sheep's fold. So just being a, one of God's sheep, that makes you a member of this household, this household of faith. Here at Agape, you're a part of the household. The church of God at large, you're a member of the household. And so when we look at this word household, what is the composition of a household? Well, it, it's determined by people who live together. Whatever that composition is, it's determined. As I said last week, we will create a culture, whether it be by default or we deliberately shape and fashion and form and create a Christian culture within our churches, creating an ethos, a mandate in which we live and how we live and how we worship. And so this morning, I want you to understand and know that we determine the definition of what this household really is. And so a household composition is determined by the people living together and their relationship to one another. What's your relationship like with your brother and sister in the faith? We determine it. In terms of household, it refers to all individuals who live in the same dwelling, who may or may not be related by blood or marriage. A household is distinct from the less inclusive category of family. We are the household. The household of what? Faith. That's who we are. We are of the household of faith. And again, Webster defines household by way of the definition that I just shared with you. But I want you to know, but scripture provides to us a description. Webster gave us the definition of the household composition, but the scripture gives us the description. The scriptures uh, uh, gives us a word picture of what the household composition is to be for the church. Somebody give him praise because it's a good thing. It's a good thing when you understand and you come to know that two are better than one, that we are better together as a household of faith, a church with a godly composition. And so we foster here at Agape. It's my goal to always foster a culture based upon these principles, these precepts, and these proposition, and we function and we operate as one house. That is the goal, that we operate and function as 
one house. Why? Because that is what makes the father happy. He said he's happy when we operate and when we live, as the scripture says, uh, when we show love for each other, be united with each other. And he says he's happy if we operate, if we were only one person, as if we were only one person. And it requires unity and, and it requires an adoption of uh, the concepts, the principles, and the precepts that the scriptures gives us as a description of what one house looks like. So ask your neighbor, what does a one house look like? Yeah, yeah, what, what does one house look like? And so this is what we're going to define as one house when it comes to the composition, the household composition for 2024. One house. Somebody say love. Yeah, love is one, the first description of what the one house uh, principles represent. One house, one house. It must start with love. And I want you to know that love is the atmosphere or the action of the house. We're preaching one house. We're giving you the description of one house. And I want you to know that love is the atmosphere and the action of one house. And so each one of us individually, we must adopt this principle, this precept, this proposition uh, in our lives and welcome the word of God to take root in our hearts so that we can, we may not be there yet, but your goal ought to be that I'm going to get there before 2024 is over. By God, I'm going to get there and I'm going to operate as if uh, I, I, I'm the only one. I'm the only one in ministry. So if everybody was like you, what kind of church would it be? And so we have to take it personal. Say, I'm taking this personal. Yeah, because we are all apart. And so if you don't do your part, then you will fall apart. Then the one house becomes divided because you're missing. And we want you to be a part of what God is doing in 2024. When we look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, even as our text has read, but I'm going to read from the King James translation here. He says, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of what? One accord and of one mind. Love. Love is the first principle in our composition of becoming one house. First John 4, 7 says, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, because God is love. And you might be a member of the body of Christ, or you, so you confess to be saved. You confess to be one of God's children. But the reality is, love is what love does. When we look at the descriptions or the actions of your life, does it depicts one house. Because if we're to be one house, we have to love. We have to be of the same, of the same as the scripture says, it, that we are to be of the same spirit, the same heart, as Philippians 2 said, of the same love that puts us on one accord. Now, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says, beloved, again, I already read that. As a matter of fact, let me give you another verse of scripture. Look at us. Uh, stay there in 1 John chapter 4. Go down to verse number 11. And I'm going to read 11 and 12. It says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also love one another. Say one house. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. In other words, his love becomes mature because perfect love dismisses all fear. It's the love of God that is developed and mature that gives us the first of the key elements as it relates to the composition of the household of one house. It starts with love. Somebody give him praise for love. Love is what love does. And love is the atmosphere. Love is the action of one house. St. John's Gospel, chapter 13. Look at verse 34, 35. It says, a new commandment I give unto you. This is Jesus. That ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love 
one another. By this, all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye what? Love one another and have love one for the other. That is essential, necessary, is paramount that we carry the quality of love, the action of love when it comes to the composition of one house. You ought to give him praise again. This word is good. And we need to rehearse this in our ears throughout this year. Love and sacrifice are synonymous. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave Jesus as what? A sacrifice. Because he loved us. He loved the world. Therefore he gave his son to die on a rugged cross for our fault, our frailties, our error, our sin. The things that we enjoyed that, that grieved God. He still allowed his son to come and die because he what? Loved us. Say love is action. Yeah, love is what love does. And if we are to be a one house, love ought to be on display. Continually in this place. Love, 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 love. He gave. So if you love someone, if you love something, you sacrifice for it. If you love it. Since unity is worth having, therefore we sacrifice in order to gain and maintain unity. One house. If you love God, you sacrifice. If you love your spouse, you what? Sacrifice. If you love your job, you what? Sacrifice. We don't want to do a lot of things, but we, we are forced to do. We are coerced to do because of the precept of love. The concept of love, love defined. Love defined is what action we must show and demonstrate our love. The scripture says that God demonstrated his love for us. And that while we were yet sinners, he sent Christ to die for us. So this church must maintain an atmosphere and allow love to be the action of this house. Many of us in life we start and we stop because we lose our love for it but love isn't an emotion that feels but it's an action of our individual wills everything we do for God must be motivated by love love is what allows us to forgive love is what allows us to cover others faults and others sin why for the for, uh, uh, for the sake of maintaining unity Maintaining unity, maintaining oneness. It keeps us from becoming angry. What is that? Love keeps us from becoming angry. Love keeps us from becoming stubborn. Love keeps us from being di disobedient or divisive in ministry. If this is to be one house, we must walk in the same love. The same love, the same love. It's just like in the military. Anytime you line soldiers up in a rank... Or a file. When you're looking down from the frontal view, it's called a file. When you're taking a, a, a view from the side, it's called what? A rank. And so when you look at the first person in that file, you shouldn't see anybody else. You should see only one person. And that's the person you are looking at to determine whether or not they are properly aligned. And so when that person moved, there are 15 other people lined up behind them. That's what God wants the church of God to be like, as if you are only one person. And then when you look from the side, you see the same thing. You only see one person because the person in charge of the formation, he would tell or she would tell them, move an inch forward, move an inch back. In other words, they're giving them proper alignment so that when they look down the rank, they only see one. I want to know what God will see when he put our love in rank. When he tells love to fall in, what would he see? Will he see just one or would he see multiples all swaying and scattered out of alignment? Love. Love is the first composition or element of the composition of one house. Somebody give him praise. Again, a household composition is determined by the people who, who, live in, who lives together and their relationship to one another. The household in terms of household refers to individuals who live in the same dwelling. We are of a one house. This is the agape family. 
This is Agape Christian Fellowship Ministry where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. Why? Because everybody belongs here. This is the household of faith. No one is to be an, a bastard. No one is to be called illegitimate. We don't look down our nose at nobody because all we like sheep have gone astray. We have to provoke one another to love and to good works. We admonish one another. We cover each other's faults and frailties and failures. We do that and we sacrifice because love requires it. Somebody say faith. So love is the atmosphere or the action of the house. Faith is the position of the house. We're talking about household composition. Faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at verse 13. It says, we have in the same. We of the household have the what? Same spirit of faith. Somebody say, that's the position I'm in. Yeah, it's a position of faith. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we what? Speak. Knowing that he which raised up Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Verse 15. For all things are for your sake. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause? Faith calls us to not faint. That's for we faint not. Why? Because we got the same spirit of faith. And but through our outward man and though rather our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Love is the atmosphere and action of the composition of one house. Faith is the position of one house. It is possible to walk in faith and not have the same spirit of faith. We have to walk in the same spirit of what? Faith. We have to believe God for the same things. You can't believe in, be believing God for something over there when we're believing God for something over here. Though you say, well, I got faith. Yeah, you got faith, but it's not the same spirit of faith. We're playing football, not soccer. We're going swimming. We're not uh, going on a, a marathon. So it, it, we have to have the same spirit of faith. And Matthew's gospel, chapter 18, verse 19 says, And again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching and agreeing, notice that, and what? Agree. We must what? Agree. Agree. Agree concerning the same issue. Whatever it is that we, we're wanting God to perform, whatever we're wanting God to perfect, whatever it is that we want God to produce, we have to touch and agree that this is what we're believing for. Somebody give him praise. This is what we're believing for. This is what we're believing for. And he says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I. In the midst of them, whenever we produce faith, God shows up. One house. One house. Whenever we are on the same accord, when we are on the same latitude or longitude, when we are aligned together in agreement, I want you to know God will perfect it and he will perform it because we are what? One house. As we said before, it's good and it's pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity because it's in wherever the place where unity is, that is the place where the Lord will command his blessing. And I want God to command his blessings right here at Agape. Don't you? Don't you? You ought to give him praise if you are believing God and knowing that he will perfect, he will perform. Why? Because Agape has the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith. I say love is the action of the house. Faith is the position of the house. Speech is the language of the house. The composition of one house. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. 
but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So the speech of, in terms of composition of one house happens to be the language of the house. When we don't speak the same language, you get confusion, you get chaos. You get mayhem, you get tyranny, you get destruction. So we are speaking the same language. Last Sunday, I told you how uh, the, the people on the earth, the people before even uh, the, in Noah's day, and how they wanted to build a tower that reached into heaven. And God had to cause a division in their language because they were on one accord. They were saying the same thing. And so the speech and the language of one house is that we must say the same thing. Not only having the same spirit of faith, but we must speak the same profession. We must have the same confession. In other words, we profess and confess what God has already said about you in your life. Whatever it is that the Father promised, we're believing God for that same thing. So when we look at Adam and Eve, why, why the curse? Because they didn't speak the same language. They weren't on one accord. In other words, their profession and their confession were different. Adam and Eve's failure was uh, in that they did not speak the same utterances that the Father had given them, what God had given them. But we can look at the contrast or in juxtaposition to Adam and Eve, we could see where Jesus when he was tempted, he spoke what the Father has spoken. And he spoke what the Father has spoken without deviation. Eve deviated. But Jesus did not deviate. He said, Satan, it is written. One house is a house that has the same confession, the same profession. We speak the same language. We speak the same language. And when we look at nations, different nations, some have English as their main language or their primary language. Others, nations, some are Arabic. Some are Spanish uh, uh, as their uh, national or the nation's language. So when it comes to the Christian culture, as it relates to one house, we too must have the same language when it comes to the house. Somebody give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So faith is, uh, I'm sorry, love is the action of the house. Faith is the position of the house. Speech is the language of the house. Somebody say rules. I'm sure you got rules in your house. Some people have rules where, where you know, you don't, Walk in the house with shoes on. Some other rules, before you eat anything, you go wash your hands first, which I, I think that's a good rule. Some rules that you don't watch TV during a certain time because that's, that time is dedicated for family time. Where you can come together, what? As a how? As a household. And so again, rules. Yeah, we got love, we got faith, we got speech, but you got to have some rules. And I want you to know that rules happens to be the law of the house. So we got the action of the house. We have the position of the house. We have the language of the house. Now we come to the law of the house. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Are you following me? Verse 14 says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, Paul says, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and all of that 
Some are saying, yeah, I'm just like Paul. I'm forgetting those things that are behind me, and I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. But, but, but your press may be one that is out of synchronicity. Yeah, God wants us all to press, but there's time that our faith needs to be focused. And whatever pressing we're doing, we need to do it together. Because our pressing with you is, has more strength than you pressing by yourself. Hello, somebody. And so God wants us to have the same, not only love, not only the same faith, not only the same speech, but he wants us to play by the same rules. It's right here in your scripture. It says, let us mind the same things. Verse 17 says, brethren, be ye followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. In other words, Webster Dictionary gives us the definition of household composition, but the scriptures gives us a description, a picture, a word picture, or pictorial of what it is to be one house. And so we must play by the same rules. We must honor the same what? Rules. He that strives for the mastery first must strive lawfully. So we do not compete and bite and fight one another, but we provoke uh, one another unto love and good works. That's the law of the house. The law, law of the house is no competition, no heresy, no backbody, biting, no slander, none of that. The law of the house says we provoke one another unto love and good works. In order for us to become what we are Showing even on our banders, on our website, even as CCI, Covenant Connections International, we must be on one accord. And what I'm giving you are the precepts, principles, the propositions that you must practice in order to master it. Somebody say, I can master it. The scripture says, he that strive for, uh, for mastery must first strive lawfully. And I want you to know it's lawful here. That we provoke one another unto love and to good works. The composition of one house. Love, the action of the house. Faith, the position of the house. Speech, the language of the house. Rules, the law of the house. Somebody say diligence. Yeah, diligence, that's the desire of the house. In order for us to be one house, there must be a diligence about us. In Hebrews 6, 11 says, and we desire, oh, glory to God. It says, and we, and we say, he's talking to me. Yeah, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. Hey, this is our desire. The desire of the house. The desire of the house. The, 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 the scripture said that you would make the father happy when we operate and live and worship as if we were one person. Hallelujah. And now we have that desire, that desire, that desire, that desire, that desire that we have the same diligence. It says to the full assurance of the hope unto the end. Verse 12 says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. God has some precious promises for us in 2024. Not only for us as a body, but for your household, for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for your children. But we must be on one accord in order for God to command his blessings there. And so we got to have what? The same love. Say that's action of the house. We have to have the same faith. Say position of the house. We must have the same speech. Say language of the house. We must play by the same rules. Say the law of the house. And we must have the same diligence. Say that's the desire of the house. Anything you find to do, do it. That's the desire. So that nothing in the house of God go undone. Whatever needs to be done, I have a desire to be diligent. What in whatever area of ministry I'm, I'm, 
I've been delegated authority or serving in whatever capacity. We're not slowful. Don't be slowful in business. Don't be slowful. Don't be slowful about doing the Lord's business. Hallelujah. Say, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And the it is the desire. We desire the same diligence unto the full assurance of the hope unto the end. And after having diligence, we must care. People don't care how much you know. People want to know how much you care. Somebody say care. That's the, watch this, that's the compassion of the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have the action of the house, say that's love. We have the position of the house, say that's faith. We have the language of the house, say that's speech. We have the law of the house, say those are rules. We have the desire of the house, somebody shout diligence. Now the compassion of the house, say we care. Give God praise if you care. The script says on some having compassion, making a difference. This compassion we see comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16 says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for, for you. The same earnest care. In 1 Corinthians 12, 25, it says that there should be no schisms. It's in your Bible. It says that there should be no schisms in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another. No big U's, uh, big I's and little U's. No more getting what the world called clicks and, and, you know, this is my group. No, we got the same. This is my ride or die. No, everybody in the house is your ride or die. So we don't isolate people. In order for us to be one house, the scripture says, if we don't have the same compassion and care one for another, he says, then you are operating from the position of schism. And schism is synonymous to division. And we're supposed to be what? So how can this be? We will never be one house if we can't operate in ministry as one person. I'm, I'm giving you the composition of the household. I said the, earlier that you are a member of the household because you are a member of God's sheepfold. Because you're in the fold, that brings you into the household. And so we must create a climate. We must create an atmosphere that represents what God has ordained for his church. And he says when we operate as if we were only one person, he says you make me happy. Anybody here want to make God happy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And somebody say, care. That's the compassion of the house. So we have the love of the house, faith of the house, speech of the house, rules of the house, diligence of the house, care of the house. Somebody say, profession of the house. Somebody say, that's a calling. And so the profession our calling happens to be the answer of the house. Our calling and our profession is the answer for the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 20 says, Let every man abide in the same calling. Wherein he was called. Do you see that? And I've taught you and those have gone through sonship. You already know that there are three callings of God. We know that there's a heavenly calling, say salvation. There's a holy calling, which is called sanctification. Then there's a high calling that we call sonship. And so, again, that's the answer to the call. The answer, the answer of the house. That's our calling. That's our profession. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the true sons of God. Somebody else say that's a calling. That's a calling. That's a calling. He's calling for sons. He's calling for daughters. He's not calling for childish children who are unskillful, who create chaos where there should be unity and harmony. We find division all because they are immature. God wants us to grow up. And you cannot ascertain these principles, these precepts, and these propositions and not grow up. 
and not grow up. It's impossible. Here's what 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12 has to say about this. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto, watch this, unto thou art, uh, unto thou art also called and has professed, it's in your Bible, a good profession before many witnesses. Somebody say calling. That's the answer of the house. So do not change your profession. Amid your tests, your trials, your tribulation, do not change your profession. Why? Because you understand the calling of God upon your life. He wants us to, to be his by way of a heavenly calling. He wants to sanctify and set us aside. That is the, again, we call that sanctification. Then, that, then he has the high calling that's called sonship. Sonship is a term we use for maturity. He's calling for the one house to be a mature house. Don't you know an immature house has a plethora of cracks and crevices when it's a new house? Follow me now. Whenever the builder builds a house, Within the first year of the house being built and occupied, you have what are called nail pops. You see what nails are backing out where they were secure before. You see cracks in places where there were no cracks before. The reason you see them is because the house is immature. And any time you are a part of what's supposed to be one house, it would never be because of me. Because there are cracks in the house all because of my immaturity. And he says he can't be happy until we operate as one person. So don't you be the one that's causing us to lose the game. Don't you be the one who causes us to miss the mark. Don't be the one who causes us to forfeit God's promises and blessings upon our lives. All because you don't want to grow up. You don't want to go to school. You don't want to adhere to what is being taught because you want to do something else. When it's classroom time, you want to go to playtime. Somebody said he's calling me to a higher plane. And so when the house matures, what happens that, that the builders come back and they fix the cracks. They put the nails back in. And they Repair it as if there were never a nail pop, as if there was never a crack, and that house would never crack again going into year two and three and four. Why? Because it's mature. Somebody give him praise. We need for the house to mature. So I give you, I give you the first three months. Yeah, we can have some nail pops and some cracks. I, I'm giving you three months. I'm giving you to, to March. At the end of March, we better be one rank. God wants us to be one by March. Whatever you need to fix, whatever you need to correct, I want you to know God would do it if you believe him for it. Because God is wanting to take us places, but we can't get there with nail pops and cracks and crevices that create schisms and divisions. So don't change your profession. Somebody say mind. That's the attitude of the house. A transformed mind. That's the attitude of the house. Philippians chapter 4, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown to stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved, I beseech Iotis and beseech Sintachi. Are you all following me? That ye be of the same mind in the Lord in the Lord you may have a different mind when it comes to what color you want to paint your bedroom yeah you may be of a different mind in terms of what car you want to buy or what house you want to live in but when it comes to the house when it comes to our faith when it comes to the Lord we must be of one mind one mind he says we must be of the same mind in the Lord. 
And whatever God has given me as your pastor and as your leader by way of vision, you got to catch it. You got to catch the vision. I write the vision. You catch the vision. Carry the vision. Contribute to the vision. How do you do that? By doing your part. By doing your part in 2024, every member of this church should be actively engaged in some capacity in ministry because that is what the Lord wants for this house. You don't feel a part if you don't do your part. Everybody has a part to play. Why? Because we are a symphony united under the Lordship's The Lordship of Jesus Christ. He's the director that brings us into one oneness and on one accord. Although we got different in, uh, instruments, but we all got a part to play. Are you hearing me? So whatever it is he's gifted you with, in 2024, we're walking in it. Why? Because we got the same mind. We mind. We got the same attitude within this house. Somebody say suffering. Said so that's the sacrifice of the house. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6. And whether ye be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering. Say same. Which we also suffer. In other words, we're suffering together. He goes on to say. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is, watch this, steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. In other words, your suffering, your pain, your sacrifice won't last forever. And I share it with this church many times Anything that's worth having in life is not without sacrifice. We all must make a sacrifice. Well, Pastor, I would, but I got this to do. Where's your sacrifice? Pastor, I hear you, but, but I can't. Uh, uh, Pastor, let me go uh, pray about it. No, he's giving you instructions. He wouldn't put it on the heart of leadership if it wasn't conducive to your growth, your development, and gain for the Lord's glory. And so we're all going to suffer. We're all going to go through. So don't be the one because of your suffering you stop worshiping. Some stop coming to church because they get up upset with God. All because they're going through. Don't let that be you. I said one house. And when we look at the composition of the household, you will find suffering in the house. When you come, uh, uh, those who have homes or apartments or whatever, do you have what are called doormats? Anybody got doormats here? Raise your hand, you got doormats. All right, thank you so much for raising your hand. So what is the purpose of your doormat? Yeah, you dust your feet off, you wipe your feet, you, you rid your feet of debris before you come into the house. What? Yeah, yeah, because everybody got dirty souls. And so, so, so before they come into, now, you'll never become one house until you use the doormat. And that, and, and don't you know that doormat suffers abuse? But yet it's at your door, you, it, it doesn't run away, it remains at the entrance of the, the door. To get into your house. In other words, yes, it's being abused and misused. But he, the doormat understands his purpose. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Jesus understood he, his, he, he was here to suffer. And so if we suffer with him, we will also reign together with him. And so when we look at the composition, yeah, there is some suffering. Somebody say image. That's the picture of the house. The image. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all 
with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the what? Same image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The same image. The same image. And so one house, when you think about one house, again, the scripture says that we are to worship and operate and live as if we were only one person. And so when a person gives a photo or an image to someone, say you're out witnessing. And someone on the street, someone in the marketplace asks you, well, what church do you go to? And you tell them, oh, well, I go to Agape Christian Fellowship. And, and they say, well, do you have a card or, or a brochure? You give them a brochure. And, and, and they say, by the way, you just got a sweet spirit. And, and, and I was just drawn to you to ask you what church you attend. And, and, and I just can't wait to be there. I can't wait to show up. I'll be there next Sunday. And they come into the parking lot. And they're greeted at the door. And they're offended before they ever make it to the sanctuary because of how sour the greeters are. How detached they are. You are the total opposite. And the person said, boy, I, you got the Lord on your life. The spirit of the Lord. But, 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 but the house don't have the same image. And so they're looking at the image of you and coming here and it's different. And so what God wants us to do is to present the same image. What you show out there, they should see in here. Somebody better give him a praise. What they see out there, they should see in here. Every one of us ought to have the same love. Every one of us ought to have the same faith, the same speech, play by the same rules, the same diligence, the same care, the same calling, the same mind. And we share. In the same suffering so that we can present the same image. Can you picture this house? Of all the elements that I've given you by way of the principles and precepts and propositions of what the household composition looks like in order for there to be one house. Can you imagine what living in a house like this would be like? It would be whole. It will be healthy. It will be robust. Somebody saying it will be strong. Jesus promised upon this rock. He's built his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so, but when we operate in this fashion, I'm telling you, beloved, we are whole. That means complete. Nobody's missing. Nobody's out of rank. Everybody doing their part. We will be healthy. Why will we be healthy? It's because we're not biting each other and feeding off one another as, uh, as uh, carnivores. But we're eating and devouring the word of God. We're feasting on the word of God. And we are robust and we are strong. In other words, when the wind blows, the floods rise and the wind blows, we still stand strong. Now here is the description. Here's where I close. Here is the description of one house in scripture. Remember Webster gave us the definition. But scripture gave us the description of what the household composition is. Would you go with me? To Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read in the King James translation. Verse 2 through 16. And you say that's a long reading. This sums it up. If you want to know what the description of one house looks like. Here it is. Fulfill ye my joy. That ye be like minded. Having the same love. Being of one accord. Say one house. Of one mind. Say one house. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem. He's talking about this one house. Say, he's talking to me. He says, each, not the preacher, not just the ministers, not just the deacons, but every member of this church, all of us. He says, let each of us esteem others better than themselves. Oh boy, this is a beautiful description. 
This is a beautiful description of what the one house concept is. He says, look not every man on his own thing. In other words, don't be just concerned about your stuff. Let's be concerned about everybody's stuff. He says, but every man also the things of others. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself, Jesus did, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You can find all of these principles, precepts, and propositions in what I'm reading. Every one of them. It goes on to say, wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that if the name Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. In other words, when I'm not there, you're doing it even more. When the pastor or your leader or the whomever is not around, you're doing it even the more. Work out your own soul salvation in fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Here it is. Boy, this is wonderful. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as light in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. I want you to know the scripture says for us to be what? Steadfast and unmovable. What I've taught you this morning, God is saying, don't you move from that place. Each one of these that has been mentioned, God says, I need for you to master. And when you master it, he says, you're going to make me happy. Why? Because when I look at one, I can see all of you. And God, I can see all of you. I can see all of you. Division does not stand a chance. Tell your neighbor, division does not stand a chance. Look to the other neighbor and tell them, division doesn't stand a chance against a house like this. So the goal in 2024 is for each of us to embody these principles, these precepts, and this composition in order to edify the house while bringing others into the house for God's glory. And so we're not one house just to be one house. It's because we're reaching the world with the gospel. We're reaching the world with the gospel. We can't reach the world until we get it together within. We will never bring them in without unless we are together within. And that is what one house is all about. Having compassion and making a difference. And the question is, are you a difference maker when it comes to being one house? Give God praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed, let us pray. Father, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you for all that has been said, all that you have revealed by way of your word. Father, let it fall on the good ground of the people's heart. And we thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, may fruit be produced 30, 60, and 100 fold. As it has been said, in three months, we will have mastered what you've given unto us today. And therefore, what stops us, what hinders us from being fruit 
producers. And Father, may the world eat of the fruit that we produce because of your love. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Amen. Was that awesome or what? That was some real meat, right? Amen. We're so grateful that our man of God, he, despite his own personal trials and tribulations, he makes sure that we eat good, solid scripture in this house. We can You can't find that everywhere. You can't go to every single church and find that. We are so blessed in the house this morning. I just want everyone to please stand on their feet. We're going to close out in benediction. He said so many good things, but one thing that really stuck with me, one thing that I'm going to really hold on to is if everyone in this house operated like I did, like Sherelle did, what state would we be left in? And I think I'm a pretty decent person, but when he said that, I could think of so many things that would fall short if everyone was me and we all operated like myself. So I know that from this day forward, I need to always analyze my diligence, my, my compassion, my perseverance, because we should always operate like one person, amen? So we can be strong and robust like Pastor just mentioned. Are we all ready to close out this morning? Amen. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in the house again, oh God. We thank you for the man of God. I just want to pray a special blessing over his life, Father. We thank you for allowing him to always lend his mind, lend his spirit and his soul to you, Father God. We thank you that he is always having an ear to hear and a spirit willing to preach and to teach the word of God. Father, we thank you that you are blessing him with a hundredfold blessing for every ounce of energy, Father God, every sacrifice that he pours out for the people of God, the people that you have sent to him, Father, to be under his guide, his guidance, Father. We thank you that you are replenishing him even the more, Father God. Bless his life, Father God. Give him clarity. Give him peace of mind. Let him rest tonight, Father, even as he is even pouring into other people, not just his sheep, Father God, but other sheep, oh God. We thank you that he is truly a man of God. Right now, cover your people as we are on our way home, Father God. We thank you that the words that were preached today, Father, are not going to fall on on uh, rocky ground, oh God. It's not going to be choked up by the thorns, oh God. We thank you that we are good ground hearers, and the word is going to plant itself deep in us, Father God, and grow deep and strong roots, oh God, and there will be fruit of our our compassion. There will be fruit of our diligence. There will be fruit of our image, Father God. Agape is going forward. We are a church that is moving forward, Father, and we thank you that we shall not be stopped, oh God. We are like a train with a mighty engine, Father, and once we get on one accord, even as Pastor has prophesied by March, oh God, we won't even look the same, Father. We won't smell the same anymore, oh God. We will be a new church, a church that is snatching out the uh, the souls from the hand of the enemy, Father God. They People will stop by just because they say, what is going on in that church, oh God? They are truly a people of God, Father. We thank you that you are pleased with our worship and our praise, Father. Stay with us, go with us as we leave this place, oh God, but never your presence, Father. Be with us, Father God. Thank you for your presence covering us and keeping us. Let everything that we left at home be just the same, if not better, than when we return, oh God. And until we all return, turn here to gather again. Keep us, Lord. We thank you for all you're doing in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You are all dismissed. Please greet each other in love.